Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International. I am Hamad Yusuf. His Royal Highness, the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, met remotely with 72 newly appointed government directors, representing 26% of directors within the civil service. His Royal Highness highlighted that, in line with His Majesty the King's vision and aspirations, Bahraini citizens remain at the center of the kingdom's continued development. He emphasized that serving the homeland is an honorable duty and responsibility, noting the importance of further strengthening public sector efficiency and performance. His Royal Highness noted the key role that the public sector executives play in ensuring government strategies and plans that further enhances as ensures the well-being of citizens and development in the kingdom. His Royal Highness welcomed their appointment to their new positions within Team Bahrain, wishing them success in their duties in serving the kingdom and its citizens. He noted the importance of teamwork, innovation and creativity across government work streams, expressing his appreciation for the public sector's efforts in serving the kingdom and its citizens. The newly appointed government officials expressed their gratitude for the opportunity to meet His Royal Highness and noted His Royal Highness's continued guidance and support to the public sector. They concluded by expressing their commitment to serving the kingdom and its citizens in line with the vision and goals of His Majesty the King and the guidance and support of His Royal Highness. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa received the Minister of Industry, Commerce and Tourism and Chairman of the Board of Directors of Gulf Air Zayed Al Zayani at Qadibiyya Palace. His Royal Highness emphasized the importance of the logistics sector in supporting the Kingdom's comprehensive development led by His Majesty the King. He highlighted the achievements of Gulf Air throughout its 70-year history and its role in strengthening the Kingdom's transport and airline services regionally and internationally. His Royal Highness was then presented with a model airplane from the Gulf Air Fleet to mark the 70th anniversary since the airline's establishment. He commended that Chairman and Board of Directors continued efforts in further developing the airline's performance and quality of services. Zayani expressed his gratitude for the opportunity to meet His Royal Highness and expressed his appreciation on behalf of Gulf Air staff for His Royal Highness's continued support for the company's achievements that benefit the Kingdom and its citizens. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Abdul Latif bin Rashid Zayani, yesterday gave a media briefing to a number of columnists and opinion writers, which was organized by the National Communications Center in cooperation with the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. The minister affirmed that Bahrain adopts a moderate and balanced foreign diplomatic policy that takes into account the strategic interests of the kingdom and ensures the achievement of security, stability, and prosperity in the region. He noted that this policy is based on constants that enhance the interests of the country and protect it, as well as preserve its advanced position at different levels under the leadership of His Majesty. 
Majesty the King and with the continuous follow-up of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister. Zayani stated that among the most important constants on which the foreign policy of Bahrain is based is commitment to and respect for international treaties and charters, building friendly relations that serve common interests with the countries of the world, in addition to ensuring that everyone lives in security and stability. He pointed out that the foreign policy of Bahrain is based on several basic pillars, for most of which is establishing the foundations for global peace, security and stability, strengthening the protection of human rights and achieving sustainable development goals. He also indicated that the desired peace in the Middle East is based on a number of pillars, for most of which is the solution of the Palestinian cause in accordance with the principle of the two-state solution, the Arab Peace Initiative and the relevant resolutions of international legitimacy. Zayani called for the need to address Iran's destabilizing practices in the region and its support of terrorism and militias, put an end to the ambitions of its ballistic missile program, and work to ensure that Iran does not develop nuclear weapons. The minister added that the unity of the GCC Council is another pillar of achieving peace in the region, stressing that the statement of Al Ula summit includes a number of commitments. The chairman of the tender board, Sheikh Naif bin Khalid Al Khalifa, launched the initiative to announce the plan of tenders, auctions, and bids processes, which includes the service of publishing procurement plans for the disposing parties subject to the law on regulating tenders, auctions, procurement, and government purchases on the board's website. This initiative comes within the framework of the development plans that the board continues to adopt to raise the level of government procurement procedures in accordance with the highest international practices, which contributes to improving Bahrain's position in international indicators. To speak more about this, we are joined by the Secretary General of the Tender Board, Dr. Mohammed Ali Bahzad. Hello, Dr. Mohammed. The Tender Board has launched Publishing Procurement Plans Initiative for the Purchase Authorities on the Tender Board website. Can you elaborate more on this initiative? Oh, first, uh, allow me to thank you for this opportunity where I can shed some light on our latest initiative. Since it is its establishment, the Tender Board has been uh, going through a well-identified continuous improvement initiative, therefore providing a variety of prime solutions and serving our uh, stakeholders by meeting or even uh, surpassing their expectations has become an essential role of our day-to-day -day activities. The Chairman of the Tender Board, His Excellency uh, Sheikh Naif bin Khalid Khalifa, has launched a key initiative that goes along those lines. Since yesterday, the Tender Board published its first public procurement plan, uh, a plan that is uh, related to purchasing authorities. I'm referring here to ministries, government authorities, companies that are fully owned by the government. We started to publish these plans on the Tender Board portal. Um, this is the first time uh, procurement plans are published since the establishment of the Tender Board 18 years ago. We have now a plan uh, that consists of uh, the, uh, the plans for the third and the fourth quarters of this year. It consists of 691 pros uh, prospective tenders that are related to 41 purchasing authorities. This plan will be uh, updated on a quarterly uh, basis and it will reflect the purchasing authorities' requirements and needs. What are the implications of publishing the public procurement plans on the tender board website and who will benefit from it? Uh, actually, this goes in two folds. Uh, first, we have on one hand, we have the contractors, vendors, and suppliers. Uh, sharing such valuable information with these companies helps them to elevate their capabilities, uh, reallocate their resources uh, appropriately, review their priorities. It will also give them the adequate lead time to, par uh, to participate in government tenders. Um, it encourages more suppliers and uh, contractors to participate in the government tenders, especially the SMEs. Uh, in addition, it uh, increases the chances of uh, forming more coalitions between suppliers to line up their resources and integrate their capabilities for more competitive uh, participation. On the other hand, we have the purchasing authorities. Uh, they will have more options on their table. Uh, there will be more competitive uh, offers, be it be uh, technically or financial uh, uh, offer, and we will have more realistic prices, the prices that will reflect the real value of the goods or services. 
The Tender Board adopts one of the best international practices in the field of public procurement. Are there any new initiatives that the Tender Board intends to implement during the coming period that might enhance the efficiency of tendering processes? Uh, actually, there are many initiatives. Many uh, were achieved, others are in the process and more to come. Among the most important of these initiatives is the shift from a fully automated tendering system, our legacy system, to a comprehensive digital procurement landscape at its fourth generation within the next two years. Uh, this will allow us to utilize the wealth of information, adapt uh, artificial intelligence within our uh, operations, and uh, this will optimize the way we all do business. Secretary General of the Tender Board, Dr. Mohammed Ali Bahzad, thank you for joining us. The national vaccination campaign continues to witness a wide turnout of citizens and residents. The Ministry of Health announced that 1,086,557 had taken the first dose of the vaccine, while 1,021,658 had taken the second and 85,017 had taken the booster dose. The ministry renewed its call for the community to commit to all precautionary measures and take the initiative to register for the coronavirus vaccination. The Ministry of Health said today that the number of active coronavirus cases reached 1,148 with 199 recoveries, 100 registered new cases and one death. 53 of the new registered cases are expatriates, 38 are contacts of active cases and 9 are travel related. The Ministry expresses heartfelt condolences to the family of the deceased and urges everyone to comply with the guidelines issued by the National Task Force for Combating the Coronavirus.